okay, okay. So, okay, so my talk is uh, uh, not at all theoretical. You know, I mean, I'm uh, just made it so that you know we can how I do uh, medical fixations. So probably, you know, I'll be able to give uh, practic practical points about this. So we start uh, any surgery with a proper positioning. You know, I mean, we have to do a preoperative planning and. Uh, uh, it, it is not uh, different while putting up it percutaneous screws. So uh, position your patient so that, you know, first and foremost, your CM has a, if you are using CM, you have to, it has a preview because most of the time, you know, sometimes this table would come, table mount would come in way or way. And specifically, if you are doing a lumbar L5 S1, and if you want to use a Ferguson or a tilted view, uh, this kind of tables, you know, might be a problem. So, you know, make sure that you have positioned your patient, patient properly and you are able to visualize all the levels very clearly before you begin even drapping your patient so that, you know, you can adjust the patient. Uh, planning of incision is also very important where you are going, where what uh, medical screws you are going to use, all these things you will have to keep in mind. So uh, the, this is just a representative image, you know, I mean, if you look at the A type of figure, the yeah, pedicles are you know, I mean, oblique, but if your incision is not in a proper plane of the blue line, some uh, either it is too medial or too lateral, your pedicle entry and, you know, the muscle creep would push your needle away from the ideal path and you may probably try to violate medial or a, a lateral border of the spine. Uh, pedicle. Make sure that you have a dead AP, a true AP and a true lateral view of your spine. And we say that, you know, it's an owl sign with two nicely looking eye owl with center point is uh, the spinous process. And you have crisp, sharp end plate. Above the upper end plate of the vertebra, you are inserting the pedicle screw. Never accept this kind of owl in your vertebra while you are putting a pedicle screw because sometimes you are if you are breaching inferior or superior margin of your pedicle this oblique vertebra would not give a proper uh, uh, view so skin incision either you know if you are do, you using a single level incision a single level surgery you might want to go with a stab wounds or if you are doing a multi-level you can put a large midline incision and just do a sub facial in multiple facial incision so that you know it's a better scar better healing or you may go for multiple skin stab incisions also uh, before we begin, you have to remember that pedicle anatomy, as uh, Dr. Vikash and Apaji both has, you know, I mean, very uh, elaborately described. It's a cylinder. So you start at three o'clock of the cylinder and you target at nine o'clock of the cylinder. So you have to go obliquely, obliquely to from one end to the other end in the pedicle so that you can get a maximum convergence of the screw and the pullout strength can be increased significantly. Now you start at the three o'clock of the pedicle in AP view. Look at the all three views, you know, which are visible here, where your needle would be. So when you start at three o'clock, your needle should be starting the pedicle in lateral. And if you have, uh, if you look at the axial, it will also start entering the pedicle. When you reach middle of the pedicle, your needle into the la lateral view also should reach in the middle of the pedicle. And when you just try to touch the medial border or a nine o'clock position on the pedicle, your needle would be entering into the vertebral body. So this is the most ideal position of your body. And these three shoots are mandatory before you advance your needle into the vertebral body to make sure that you have not violated the medial cortex of the pedicle. Now, you have to keep in mind and study the pedicle anatomy beforehand before you go into uh, putting your pedicle screw because pedicle anatomy would be different at different levels and not only that, you know, it will be very different at the same vertebra as well. So if you look at this pedicle left side in L2, you can see that, you know, it's more or less straight, uh, uh, straighter trajectory than the routine convergent trajectory. If you go for L3, the convergence would be better. And you see the entry point has moved slight lateral to get a proper trajectory for your pedicle screw rather than in this L2 pedicle. Now, these are the cuts of the same patient. So, you know, you have to keep in mind that entry also would change, you know, the way you go in down the level. And you can achieve with good convergence on the left-sided pedicle in L3. You look at the right pedicle of this same patient. The pedicle is not only thinner, pedicle is more vertically oriented than the left side of the pedicle. So you have to make sure that, you know, this pedicle might uh, encompass a larger size of this screw. And you may want to, you know, put slightly lesser size of the screw in this if you are doing uh, a very tight or a fixed uh, position. Now, if you see the center, you know, in L2, there will be no convergence of the pedicle. So don't always try to achieve convergence in your, in your patient by looking at your pre-op, pre preoperative images. And in this, your left screw would appear converging, but right screw will not appear so convergent because of the peculiar pedicle anatomy. Now, this is L4 is the most ideal vertebra in this patient where you can achieve convergence, more or less entry point would be same, and you can do in a classical way. 
L5 in majority of the cases will have a very peculiar anatomy to put pedicle screws. If you look at this patient, the entry goes quite lateral if you want to put the longest size of the screw. If you start here and go straighter, you know, I mean, you no know, sooner you will start breaching the lateral cortex and you will end up putting a smaller screw in this patient or your screw will protrude out of the anterior border and may endanger the vascular structure lying around L5 S1 disc space. So always study your anatomy of your patient before you encompass or before you go for a percutaneous per per pedicle screw fixation. Once you have done the basic steps remain same. You have to target your Jamshidi needle at your entry point under your fluoroscopic guidance and you have to uh, plan your skin incision accordingly. Once you put the skin incision, jab your needle inside to do a liberal facial release. Otherwise, fascia would start pushing your needle away from your ideal trajectory point. So ideal facial release or a liberal facial release is very much mandatory to put a proper angulated screw. This is just the representative image. How you start? You start at the three o'clock uh, uh, on the pedicle and target the nine o'clock. Now, when you are doing a multi-level screw incision, I always try to mark all entry point or a lateral border or a three o'clock position of the pedicle screw and draw a line. Why? Because if you don't draw a line, you know, when you are putting upper size or a lower size screw, sometimes your screw will be not in line. And later on, when you want to put a rod, this not aligned screws will make it difficult to put, uh, put the rod in a proper position. So when you have marked your all incision will be aligned and more or less your needle and screw placement would become uh, in, in line and it will be easier to put your screws. Now accessing the pedicle, you have a Jamshidi needle or a bone biopsy needle. There are two types of needle available. One is a bevel ended uh, needle and the other one is trocar ended needle. So both needle has its distinct advantages. So generally, most of the cases we use a beveled angle uh, jam CD needle because the bevel helps me to direct my needle in whatever way direction I want. So uh, if, you, if your bevel is turned turn towards inferior, this part is turned inferior and your needle will, if you when you try to enter the pedicle, your needle will gradually go upward. So you can actually change direction while going inside the pedicle. While trocar tip is very important in sclerotic pedicles, a bevel tip would get stuck in a scler sclerotic pedicle and this trocar tip will act like a drill when you rotate and you can very easily cannulate a, a, a sclerotic pedicle. You may use different kind of a navigated needle or a ne needle with a neuromonitoring prop attached. Now, before we go further for uh, putting our screws, I always put a liberal facial incision. I use my finger to palpate all the anatomies, create a space for your needle so that unnecessary muscle fibers are not damaged. One second, I unnecessarily don't perforate the facet capsule specifically of the adjacent level. Because if you don't use this anatomy, you will keep on you know, perforating your capsule and which later on may end up having adjacent level problem. So I always try to feel all these bony landmarks, which Dr. Vikas and Dr. Apaji described in thoracic and lumbar pedicle with my finger before I start putting my uh, uh, needle inside. Uh, I try to avoid hammering needle most of the time. I try to rotate and go gradually inside the pedicle so that, you know, I mean, if it is an osteoporotic bone, uh, bone needle doesn't just go sunk, sink inside the pedicle and danger, endanger the uh, vascular or a neuro neurological structure. So I always try to rotate the needle gradually unless it's a very sclerotic bone where I'm not able to go. And then those cases I use trocar tip and may use a gentle tap of the hammer. So gradually advance your needle targeting nine o'clock once you reach your base of the pedicle, more or less, you know, I mean, you are safe that you have not breached lateral border of uh, 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 lateral, uh, sorry, medial border of the pedicle. Once you have cannulated the pedicle, try to put put a guide wire from the Jamshidi needle and make sure that you know your needle never goes into anterior one third of your uh, vertebral body because sometimes you may have damaged the anterior end plate and your wire would. Uh, penetrate that interior wall and when while drilling or while uh, uh, tapping the uh, the pedicle your wire would advance and start uh, may endanger the aorta vena cava which is lies just in front of it so i always keep my needle in posterior uh, middle half or a posterior one third and then advance the threaded ended guide wire inside the pedicle i always try to feel the interior wall see your wire should hit interior wall in lateral view Otherwise, if your wire is stuck like, like this somewhere in between, that means your wire is touching the lateral border, intro lateral border of your vertebral body. And you have to try to make it more medial so that your wire reach to the interior vertebral body. And that is the proper convergence or a proper length of the screw you can insert. So once that is done, you insert all the wires and then start tapping, uh, tapping the screw. Once screws are tapped, 
you can uh, tap this pedicle again you know only tap the pedicle never try to uh, tap your uh, uh, cancellous bones into the vertebral body once tapping is done start putting the screw inside always make sure that your screw is entering into anterior one third of anterior one third of the vertebral body don't try to go too anterior unless you want a bicortical purchase of your spine once the rod is inserted there are various ways by which you can put this uh, rod a uh, classical was extent where you know you have to make the male and female pose together that will align the tulip of the screw and from a separate stab incision you can railroad the rod into the tulip and then fix the screws you when you are using multi level now you know i mean multi level free hand techniques are also available you can do compression and distraction also along with different techniques with different system uh you can contour the rod now when you are putting a multi level free hand longitude or similar uh, systems when you are using and you can at, uh, attend to this multi level multiple level cases these are the in small incisions which are uh, 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 there for a percutaneous pedicle screw fixation this is just a small video i'll just quickly go through the video of percutaneous pedicle screw this is how i am putting this was one of the sclerotic bone where i used the jamshedi needle to hammer tap gently till the needle reaches into the bone so once needle is gone the other needle is been put once needle is there i put a guide wire inside you can see this in isim isim you know all four guide wires are there once guide wires are inserted dilate over the guide wire to create a space for the tap once tapping is done this is how we are we are tapping i only tap the pedicle never try to go beyond the pedicle once tapping is done put the screw so this is the wiper system where you know the rod goes from the same channel you don't need a separate channel always keep under observation of i iitv every you know 10 to 10 mm or so around 10 turns you have to check your iitv that your screw is advancing properly it is not tenting or bending the wire or your wire is not migrating anteriorly sometimes when your wire wire is stuck inside the screw and you keep up rotating without checking the position of the wire wire will penetrate the anterior cortex and you know it will start hitting on the vascular structure just lying in front of it so once your screws are inside you can use your technique the system which has provided you know to put your uh, rod inside and once rod is there inside you can use uh, compression distraction for your patient so this is the final placement of the rod so you can put the same things up, up on the opposite side similar way and you put the rod from the same incision thank you so much